Hey guys, my name is Danish and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about Mac OS applications that you must have. So you just bought a MacBook and you don't really have any experience in the Mac OS ecosystem or you are coming from Windows or you are coming directly from uh, using a smartphone as your main device to a laptop. So congratulations on your purchase but you have some idea of what you might need and want but I'll walk you through all the steps that you need to do to get yourself up and running with mac os with a few simple downloads and installations without any customization problems or technical know-how that you need to have to get up and running so this is a video for you so let's get right into it So you just started with your new laptop and I'm going to assume that you went through the step, uh, setup process that macOS takes you through in entering your details, your iCloud account and logging into the macOS home screen. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. Part one is the application that you can download directly from the app store. So no headache over there. Just click install download and it will take care of everything for you. And part two will be where you are going to download applications from the web using Safari or chrome but i'll get to that later so let's start with part one and going on with the apps that you can get from the app store so apps that you really must have is an extractor for the dot zip dot r dot rar files that you keep downloading regularly and on windows we used to get winrar or something like that but here there is an app called rar extractor light which is there on the app store and it's quite simple and intuitive that you just click on the folder that you want to uncompress and it does it for you so it's really simple and elegant solution on the mac store coming on to your word processing applications we have pages for word keynote for your powerpoint so these are apple's offerings which are there for free on the app store that you can just get to start working with your files uh, but the issue here is the they save it in a different file format so pages gives you a dot pages extension and so on and so forth for the numbers and the keynote but there is an option to convert the files to dot word or dot ppt but this is another conversation that we will have with the default application that you can have for word office and excel because there are multiple options here in this ecosystem and i'll have another video coming up on that so if you want to watch that go ahead ahead and subscribe so you can check out all my new videos as soon as they come out but i digress so let's continue on with the apps that you can get from the mac app store so i have two additional applications that you might or might not need one is telegram if you're a telegram user it's a good desktop application called telegram Lite. and the second application is kindle so if you're a reader and you buy a lot of books from amazon the kindle reader is really good apple has its books reader but yeah kindle reader is good for your amazon list and the books is great for your offline so now coming on to part to, we are going to talk about applications that you are going to have to download from the web and install them manually so any application that you are going to download for mac os will not have the .exe extension but it will have the .dmg extension to it so once you download these uh, install files in the .dmg format you are going to double click on the .dmg file and it will mount a drive with the install media in that once you open that drive it will give you two paths one path is it will open an installer and it will take you through the normal wizard steps the other part is it will have the application and the applications window shortcut where you just have to drag and drop it to your applications folder and it will install itself and here some of the people have a few issues because once they drag it to the applications folder and they go to applications and double click on the app it will say this app cannot be opened because it it's from an external source so the solution for that is you have to right click on the app and click open and it will give you the open option for opening the app and this only happens during the first time after installation so it will not happen again and you can open the app seamlessly after this but i digress and this is a small issue that you can just take care of but coming on to the applications the first and foremost application you will download will be a browser be it chrome opera firefox 
it or whatever is your fancy you can just download it safari is a good browser but if you are not used to it and you are used to chrome or opera and have all of your password saved with them you would rather go with them because it reduces a bit of a headache which i understand and i'll have links to all the browsers uh, in the description below and after the browser you are going to have to think about how you are going to consume your media and here vlc comes in so vlc is a great application it's open source and it's uh, really the best of all media consumers uh, the in include quick time player is not that good and you can't play playlists in all that it's a big mess over there so vlc is a great application that you can have and now coming on to how to connect your smartphone to your laptop so on windows any android right device would just open up as an external storage solution but on mac it's a bit different the iphone comes up pretty easily and it's because it's integrated but for android you have to go through a few steps so here comes android file transfer application it's quite lightweight and it's really good for transferring your files and it is an external application that you have to install but there is a solution so you don't have to worry too much now coming on to a bit more of a niche software that most people don't really know how to use and this is the intel power gadget so this is just an application that shows you your current stats of power consumption your clock speeds your temperature and your consumption of the cpu so i have it running right there in the background and it's always there for me and it's a good habit to know what your system is doing and in which manner are you putting a stress on the system so if you see the clocks dip you know that you're throttling or if you have a power limit issue so you know when the power is and it's something that everybody has to start using more and more because it just gives you more awareness of what your system is and its system self now coming to more of a more use case scenario in terms of a casual gamer you you're really going to have to download steam client and epic client if you use epic but yeah that's a whole new mess with epic and apple but i digress steam is something very interesting because it used to have a lot more library in mac os mojave where the 32 bit support was present but once we come to catalina the 32 bit support was dropped so a lot of the old games you are un unplayable anymore there are still a huge library that you can still play on mac os and if you are on steam you can feel free to add me i'll have my profile linked in the description as well and following steam you will think about using discord and the discord app is really good on mac os you will really think about adding more applications that you really you require and these are the applications that i would suggest that you all can install except the steam and discord which is a bit of a minor thing and i have installed logitech logi option software because i use the mx master 2s which is a review that is pending and will come up on the channel soon but yeah so these are the basic apps that you can have and this is just a step one in getting to know how your mac works and i'll talk about all the default applications that are good enough or if you need alternatives to those in another video because that is a vast topic and there is a lot of criticism and debate about which app is better if the default one or the third party would you recommend so this is a part of a series of videos that i'm going to create about mac os applications and how to start as a novice in the mac os ecosystem and slowly get all the technical information and technical know-how and to become a power user of mac os if i might say so and i'll guide you through this path and hope you learn a lot on mac os i'm going to do a, another one on windows as well so stay tuned for that but i guess that's it for this video it's quite a short video compared to the others on my channel but this topic is something that i cannot have a, a extremely long video so i have to fragment it into structure so it's easier for people to consume and for so that's it for me today Today. hope you had a fun week stay home stay safe i'll see you guys in the next one peace